excited to talk to you. I was so <laughs> happy <too. laughs> when your publicist reached out to me yeah. and I thought about the timing of it because when she reached out or when the, your publicist reached out, yeah. it was kind of maybe about four episodes into the series. Yeah. And it was so intense. I thought, I want to wait until it's done, well done. because yes. it's really <laughs> causing quite a sensation <laughs> online. And I don't want to be that person that. <laughs> and at the same Thank time, you. I wanted to talk to you about it in totality sure. without fear of. Yeah. You know, give me really anything away because now everyone should know. If you haven't, you've got to catch up with that. Do you know what I mean? But I, I remember my uh, Twitch on Monday, Sunday, we watched it over here. And then the UK and Europe were getting it on Monday. So I was like, nah, I, I can't, no spoilers up from me for today, all day Monday. But from Tuesday, you should know. So I, yeah, all, all, all rules breaking. Yeah, by then you should have, you know, muted, at least muted minimally on yes. social media. Until you, you want to see it. Words. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what I did because once I start taking off, I'm becoming one of those impatient people who wants it all. So I'm because like, that's I'm what wait. we've been given because that's what we have and we can yeah. and getting it weekly. It's intense waiting for it weekly. That's yeah. how we grew up though. I know. What do you, how do you think that helps or not hinders per se, but how do you think that changes as a performer who is in a series like this? How does that change the way we consume, the the way people react to you as a performer, is it good to get it all? Or is um, it something you to see, I'm, to I'm like you, I'm in between, because we're now in a streaming world. If I can watch a thing, I love watching it. Well, if, if it takes me, then I want the next one. Then I want the next one. Then I want the next one. But there have been moments I have realized, I'm going, oh, no, I mean, you missed episode six and seven, because you're lying on the So I've got to rewind them, because I've fallen asleep a little bit. And then there's something about weekly thing because you've got to have what the undoing. Let's let's talk about this. What the undoing did brilliant is a cliffhanger, mm -hmm. and you need that for a weekly thing. I think I think it absolutely works, and it's only small. It's a limited series. It's six episodes, and that's okay. And then now, if you want to, that's the genius that HBO Max have done. And HBO is that now you can stream it all in one go. Mm -hmm. But that initial roller, I really enjoyed, and I also enjoyed just seeing how it was in the world because what for me was interesting is I had never seen episode six um yeah so wow. I think most of us went from producers and publicity and director had seen it and they were still working on it but most of us actors hadn't seen episode six or no one's told me that they have so I don't know so I was meeting on Sunday for the very first time with everybody else and that was like because of course I was noting my performance, I was noting editing. I was like, okay, that's an interesting choice. Whereas the other episodes one to five, I saw ages ago. So I've, I can let them be. I've, I've worked out through my whole process of letting stuff go. Well, that's that there, that's that there. Okay, wait and see. And I don't like watching myself. It's not an easy thing to do. You like to tell the story, mm -hmm. but I was like, no, I'm gonna sit through this and just see how it meets the world. And oh my goodness, Jandra, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I think that, you know, the fact that this was episodic was brilliant. HBO has been very, has really well. been setting the bar with these yeah. limited series. The yeah. Night Of was another one that was Watchmen. such a phenomenon. Yeah. Phenomena. I've not and seen The Night Of. I've got to, I keep hearing about this. I don't know anything about it. I've got to watch that. I had yeah. to put the undoing, I had to put it on that same pedestal because it's <laughs> oh, really? just as equally as well done the episodic thing, I think, helped it so much because it created even more of a buzz yes. because you aren't really sure what the show is going to be about. Exactly. Yeah. When you go down the journey. And what? also you want to have opinions of people too soon. If it all came out in one go with the limited series, and I think that's what my experience was watching what was happening with, with Watchmen. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, I've got to catch up with that. I've got to catch up weekly. And you just heard people talking with that gentle build up. I finally watched it two weeks ago, all in one go. Oh my fucking God. Right. Oh my right. God. But I'm really happy that I had all that information and my curiosity was built up from all those moments of weekly, weekly. Okay. Really interesting people are talking about this. Interesting mm -hmm. women are talking about this. And Regina King is queen. Let's understand this. So right. it was a pleasure to just watch that. And then for me, discovering how I always know who's great, but Jeremy Irons in one guy, I'm like, you're amazing, Jeremy. 
You're amazing. I worked with his wife, Sinead, years ago. So it was just wonderful to see all this coming through. So it's all a balance, isn't it? That's what we're saying. It's yeah. all a balance. I mean, you're amazing in this. You know, we're Thank talking you. about film. We're talking about you. It was just something like your cadence, your performance, your energy. It was such, it was <laughs> masterful. I mean, your character is intelligent. Oh, God bless you. It's still Thank aloof. You but yeah. committed to a cause and you just aren't quite sure what's where she is, where yeah. she is in the scheme yeah. of this whole thing. Because yeah. usually when you have a, an attorney representing someone with perceived guilt, yeah. then they're either all the way on the dirty side on the tape, oh, all the way on the good completely, side, completely, <laughs> completely righteous yeah. to the point where Excuse it's a me. little bit annoying in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. But, we don't have that here. Walk me back to that first reading of your part and what it inspired inside of you when you read through it. I'm so, thank you for saying all that. I really appreciate that because it's really interesting for me. I was talking to my mentor just this morning because he finally watched it yesterday. So we're doing a catch up and he's 84 years old and I've known him for 25 Aww. years. I know, it's brilliant. And I said to Tony, I mean, this is amazing. Please, please understand that this is not um, naive at all. I'm, I, I was going, I don't understand what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. What I have is the script. I have is a script and I have the director navigating with me to get the story that she'd like. All those words that I've now understood have become memes from Hayley Fitzgerald, <laughs> are David E. Kelly's words. Mm -hmm. And with the calibration of Susanna Beer, in terms of how I, I play it, has been the joy of discovering. Because though I was from theatre, three years of theatre, doing a gig, theatre gig for three years, ultimately, with bits in between and some other lovely little bits of TV work in between, um, to getting this extraordinary gig, because the script was fantastic. And I loved that. And then when Hayley, I read Hayley for the first time, I was like, I have no idea who she is, but I want to meet her. I want to meet her. And then I get the chance to get to be Hayley. And I always, I always say in interviews uh, recently is that Hayley Fitzgerald, just think about that name in print. Anybody could have played that part. And right. I happen to be the one who got it. So the version of Hayley is Noma's black woman version of this person. And with that understanding that she works in the law firm that she does, that she is experienced as she is, the words kind of do it for you, but actually what Susanna gave me to do and was a resistance because I've been working, I've, I've been being in the theater, you throw all your stuff right to the back of the wall at the back of the room. This one's like, come in, go quieter, go stiller. And I'm like, really? How do I go quieter? I'm just, because the mic's already there doing it for you. Right. Do you know what I mean? The mic is doing that. The sound designer is going to do their thing. The intensity of the camera being here is going to do its thing. So Noma, don't worry about that. Just speak to the person in front of you. And when the person in front of you is Nicole Kidman or Hugh Grant or Donald Sutherland or any of the other actors I worked with, Edgar Ramirez, just joyous, just joyous because it's about play. Sophie Grobble, God bless her. I remember talking about theatre and going, oh, thank God we're theatre creatures, but look at us doing this TV thing. And it's like, <laughs> oh, great. So we understand the language, so we will do that. So I, whew, what... Look, I'm very lucky. So it, it's like, it's already there. I get to play it and then I get to watch it and I go, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Cause I'll always be making a note of what I could do better. I still have little personal things that I've got to work through. Right. Um, of some of the moments that I, I did, but now it's done and the world has met the undoing and has met Hayley Fitzgerald and therefore has met me. It starts with David E. Kelly's writing and I'm the lucky person who got to say those words. With that theater background, a lot of this show is so intense and it's meant to to pull you in like you yeah. mentioned with theater you're speaking to the back of the room yeah. but here yeah. it's a little bit more intimate but it's almost equally as dramatic yes. just that subtlety as it would be in a big theater production absolutely and what? i know as an audience member sorry hold on to that okay. question but as an audience member i love watching film i love watching tv because it does do a totally different thing to the majority of the work that I've done, which is theatre. Mm -hmm. And as you go in and there, but, and there for me to find that I'm in something that has 
made me be part of that experience as an actor. Joyous. Sorry, what was the question you're going to no, ask? No, I would say, what would you feel, how was, when you started making that transition into doing film and, and TV and those types of things, was that transition difficult to you to bring that scales in a sense yeah, down it's a learning to, curve. That intimate, to that intimate level? Yeah, it's a learning curve and it's about trust. And I, all these things with any job like this, it's practice, it's practice. And the more practice I've had, the more I've understood and the simpler I've got. And the undoing is actually, I did a lovely TV series before the undoing in the middle of um, the theater show I was doing. We had seven months off between the West End and Broadway and I was in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So that was amazing. But in that little seven month gap, I did a lovely uh, piece of uh, TV called Black Earth Rising by Hugo Blick, the director and writer. And, um, Michaela Cole was our lead actress in that and she I love Michaela anything she does I'm like yeah you can you just rule the world Michaela it's, it's, she's just magnificent let me just big up I may destroy you if you haven't seen that um but that sense of so I I understood I enjoyed that and 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 Hugh, Hugo is, is a very good teacher in that sense it's like no no it's all right and he would go do you want to have a look at what you did? I'm happy. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to have a look at what I did. And he said, that, 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 this, and I was like, okay, great. So then a year and a half later, I come back to TV doing The Undoing and I feel as if I've forgotten everything because it's literally, I finished on the Sunday, the last show of Harry Potter is on the Sunday. My first day of The Undoing is on the Friday following, literally less than a week. And I's like, oh, what, what, what is this? I haven't worn this cloak and this coat. Well, ah, I don't know how, whoa, my, 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 it's like driving on the other side of the road. I'm learning to drive on the American side of the road. It drives me crazy because my body is automatically going the other way. Whereas I've got to go to the right if I'm in the car and to, do you know what I mean? There's little things like that. It's just recalibrating how you do this thing. Yeah. There's a lot of the theater haunts, you know, I've been speaking to a number of performers lately and I love hearing how they made that transition from theater to TV yeah. and, and where it's going. Is theater, would you call, what would you call theater going from theater to, to TV and to film? Like, is, would you say it's um, like, what's the word where um, you have to run a race and uh, they have to work you through it. And it's intense, like an intense yeah. type of training, like a, yeah accelerated training course? Yes, you mean in terms of theatre or from theatre into TV? Because yes. what, what it is, it's that it's a different, um, the point of each one is exactly the same, to tell a story. The formula of each one is totally different. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to navigate. So from theatre to TV, I know, and it's true that a lot of people who started off in TV, the idea of going into theatre the other way around is quite terrifying because actually what they've got to do is come from here and now go out there. But it's actually easier to go big and then now bring everything you've got back that way. Doesn't mean it's easy. Doesn't mean it's easy, but it's easier. Mm -hmm. And I'm fascinated by that. I am fascinated by that because I am finally now letting go of the angst that I, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I do know what I'm doing. I just got to understand what the form is. Because that's what I was, that I, was, I was making that as an excuse and as a resistance to jump in. And so when you work with someone like Hugh and Nicole and um, Susanna, you have to jump in. You have to jump in and you go, oh, fuck. If I'm here getting the part already, I'm with these people. And my ego is big enough, Deandra. My <laughs> ego is big enough. I want to meet them. I want to meet them. Mm -hmm. And therefore, let's see what happens. But it's about the work in that moment. And then what you're seeing is a year and a half later. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that was a year and a half ago. Nearly, yeah, about a year and a half ago. It's extraordinary. When did you know this was for you? <gasps> I still don't know. <laughs> Just performing in general. I'm always oh intrigued by people's origin stories of yes. when that bulb went off that, you know what, I think this is for me. Yeah, it was actually my mentor. Um, I didn't go to drama school. I tried for drama school for two years in the row. But what I had had was youth theatre from the age of 13, which I found my tribe. I always say this, I was not great at school academically, all the cliches that we now understand. Um, 
I could do it all, but it just wasn't buzzing me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I go to do youth theatre every Sunday from the age of 13 through till 16, 17. And that is my joy. And at the end of the, because I think it was from spring into summer, the end of the, the, the uh, season, we put on a show. So, but you didn't have to be just in the front. You could be backstage, you could be sound, you could all different departments and that joy is staying. But I wasn't going to be an actor. It's just, this is what I love doing. And then you look back at the universe and how the universe shows you little moments of your life at this vantage point you're going, well, it was always kind of there. Mm -hmm. And then school finished and I went, well, I suppose I've been doing the acting. Let me see if I can get into drama school. Mm -hmm. Didn't get into drama school two years in a row. That's not for me. Went to work for a PR company for two years, thought this is it. I understand this. Glamour, fashion, music, hard work. Let's get this stuff going. Got made redundant. That shocked me but I thought I was doing good. And it was that sense of what do I want to do? When those moments in life, which we think are awful, are always, I do believe this, are always gifts, are always gifts. And you will look back on your life and go, that felt horrible in that moment, but look what came out of that. And in that period, I found Tony, my mentor, who said, you don't need to go to drama school. He's an old actor, an ex-actor rather, um, who was teaching loads of different people at, at different times. And he became my teacher with the Shakespeare, um, and he gave me the confidence to go to the Royal Shakespeare Company. He was just basically saying, you can do this. You can do this. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think I can, okay. And I, having the conversation with him this morning, I said, Tony, look at our career. Look at it. We're doing all right. Man, well, we might be kindred spirits. Now, when I think back to my yeah. own words, except I don't act, but, but you know, how? Like, Maybe I might, mm -hmm. you know, I think about my own origin story is the same kind of thing. In high school, wasn't really into it, but I was in a drama and I was a drama yeah. president and, you know, and doing you do all those all things, and work yes. backstage crew. What was the first play you ever did? I can't, I was trying to think of mine and I can't yes. think of what, I know we did anything, anything goes. Oh, and, well, so you could, you can sing and dance and all that. I can do it. Oh, no, I now. can't. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot dance, you know. I'm. I. I got a pretty good two step at a barbecue. Oh yeah, that's with me exactly. And a bit of a shimmy of the shoulders. That's what I can do <laughs> when it comes to shows. But you know, I love the answer question because I, I was asked recently by a student. I had to think. I went, oh, it was the Princess and the Swineherd was the first proper play I ever did at the age of thirteen for that youth theatre company. That was the very first play that went. I love this, and I was playing the Queen Mother, so it was great. And then you do. Breath another year, you know, you do some new writing that day, exactly. the Greek musical, the other work. If I had to do a singer, I wasn't singing, but I do the silly dancing, and that was gorgeous. But the first um, professional play after meeting Tony was a um, is John Ford, 1600s, uh, Women Beware Women, playing a character called Bianca. And that was fascinating. And it was in a pub theatre when we used to do pub theatres if you can do a proper theatre you're still hustling for your equity card you get work wherever you can and it's like we did that we did that mm -hmm. um and then I was always going to be a jobbing actor I still am a jobbing actor if that makes sense <laughs> and I was saying to some students yesterday but every job is the first day of school every job so oh. let's see what else happens I love that Thank now you. as you watch as the undoing has grown into this phenomenon. It's going to continue to grow as people keep discussing and dissecting it yeah. online. Is it overwhelming? I mean, you have it has all on paper, it has all the elements of a success, but you never quite know until oh, it lands know. and everyone watches it. As you yeah. watch it sort of take on this light. Blown away. Feel? Blown away. Blown away. Um, and and to be honest, my ego is there going, oh my God, my name is being put in the same sentence as the other amazing actors in that show. Well deserved. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, I just got emotional because I'm always, um, I think it's a combination of talking to my mentor this morning, then my mum, and now just actually saying it out loud. We've come a long way, baby, so I'm really, really happy and I'm a newbie at the age of 51 I've been doing acting for a long time but we as actors you can't choose a career you can only choose the passion and then there's a moment when the career happens to you and for me that was Harry Potter the stage show which led me to be seen for the undoing and now I'm going what is possible 
and there has been sorry there was a bit of ego um uh, scrolling via the twitter i was like okay i'm not gonna i'm just gonna oh because people were sending me things i was like oh my god oh god oh my god people are saying this oh my god shut up from that person oh my god and i'm like a day at a time Gianda, we have to and i'm just so fucking grateful excuse my language i do swear i'm so That's grateful okay. we 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 an adult show it's okay we yes thank here. you thank we you we're all adults here Nomi, you are so lovely and you are so oh, talented you Oh, and I you. enjoyed you immensely, immensely. Thank and you. it was so refreshing to see a Black woman in this role and thriving and doing a Thank character, final, you know, being given the opportunity to do something more. It's that, it's that. Oh. Sorry, I'm, 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 I, I know we're winding down, but I just really want to, the two things I want to acknowledge. For the majority of us, and I'm talking to my um, Black British sister friends as well, actor sister friends, it's all about practice. That's all we ever want. We just want the practice to hone our craft. I got lucky on this one. So now let's see. But I also have to acknowledge you as an African-American woman. I'm a British South African hybrid. And I need to acknowledge, and I always have to do this lately, especially post-George Floyd, the African-American experience is not my experience. As part of the diaspora, right. I know what racism is. But the light, the illumination came to me, but I said, but I don't know what it is to be an African-American. So to get to play Haley, I really had to do a lot of work and a lot of questions and a lot of asking of my African-American women friends. So it's, not, it's never just you on your own. We always do things collectively and I just get to get the joy of this. So thank you, thank you. The pleasure is mine. On a side note, I'm going to that yeah. be our end there. But on a Thank side you. note, <laughs> yes. have you watched the, speaking of your British sisters, have you watched these small acts movies? Not yet. Oh. So, wait a minute. I, I've got to figure out where to get them because I've been- Amazon. I need to see. Oh, it is Amazon. Thank you. I have got Brighton because I've kept saying, and I kept boosting because I know a few people in it and who work back, backstage on it. And everyone just says it's stunning, but it's Steve McQueen. But that, and I want to watch, is it the Lover's Rock episode? They're all great, but the, the, the Lover's Rock episode oh. sounds phenomenal for me. Um, great. So that's the one I'm going to do all in one go. I'm oh. going to do those all in one go. Yeah. While you speak about the African-American experience, yeah. that was so educational to me about the Black British but We experience. have to understand that. Because we yeah, are so in a, But we're not a monolith. We, we, we all need to know that we have different experiences. Oh, we have to. Oh, good. I'm glad you loved that. Latita is yeah. ridiculous. But she's, I mean, she's extraordinary. Oh, I was excited. I do hope they make a Black Panther. I really do. Yeah. And I really then um, I, I've only seen two of them. I've got to watch the others. I saw that one and I did press for um, Red, White and Blue. That's one John Boyega is in. Yes, which has just come out. That's the most recent one. Oh, and then I started is- looking about the story about the real guy and I was like, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm enjoying yeah. seeing our, you know, our black folks from yes. our motherland getting it in. And then I saw yeah. another film recently on Netflix called Our House. Oh, with lovely Wumi and Shoppe. So I said to Wumi, I'm not going to be watching that. It looks too oh, much scary. horror. I don't do horror. I'm sorry. Oh, it's and so I finally good, did though. Get Out. I did finally watch Get Out. But those two, can I just talk about those two? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many of us around, but when you see great stuff happening for great people and not and, and not just black people, but just great actors. Right. Those two are great actors. It's, it's right. joyous, it's joyous. Oh, right. 